one third of the cost for it. <laughs> the uh, pots that I showed you guys that were stepped down, root maker pots. The company that makes those also makes these root trapper bags. The bag is designed to trap the root, not allow it to turn because of the felt that's inside the bag. And just a little bit of air will get through that bag and create a cauterization of that root. Now these have only been in the bag for uh, since uh, last fall. These are root suckers that I had uh, <coughs> grafted. And this is going to be the beginning of your uh, grafted trees. This one right here is an NC1. It is bark. I have a tag right here. We're going to tag it onto the fence if we got uh, small enough zip tie to do it. And it's a permanent tag. The one behind me is a uh, overlease. This row is going to be NC1s. It's probably about halfway down. At least. And then on the other end, maybe another variety. Come down and they'll be at the end. Okay. And we're going to do that with the overlease. That row, down that row, is all going to be overlease. We're going to try to keep from mixing cultivars within that orchard. We want to keep cultivars close to each other. Now these bags are stitched. And what I did was, as I took a blade, there's an outer stitch that you can see right here. I went down through, scored it. Pulled it out, it was like a dog food bag. And then there's an inner stitch, as you can see right there. And all I did was I took my blade, opened it up, started to cut, and it's just like unzipping the bag. I tried to take trees that are well developed and roots out of these bags. It's a headache. They're hard to get out. Uh, people get aggravated with them because they don't understand them. And the bags, incidentally, are made from the same material that the pots are made out of. Plastic. And what I did was, when I un uh, zipped the bag, I used a soldering iron, a small soldering iron, and I made holes in the bag to be able to put the zip ties to hold the bag together. And by doing it that way, the bag can be sterilized just like a pot can be rinsed off and then you can turn around and uh, reuse that bag because of the zip ties and it kind of stuck together from where I melted it come on baby be a good one some of these I have one just to tell you, it was a taller bag. And from the root, the root ball was like this, and it was all solid root ball. I planted it on my property. Matter of fact, it was a tree that I had down at the Paul Paul Festival. Wouldn't start for you. That's not right there. Okay. I'm going to hold it together. Look at all the root down there. There's something about the pawpaw. Step up and smell that. Tell me what you smell. Uh, not in the prison, Jeff. No. <laughs> Watch what you say in prison. Uh, to me, the way I can tell that that root's good, I get that smell of diesel. Diesel gold. Yeah. I guess it is. Okay. Hey, Dan, do me yep. a favor. Grab that bucket. Oh, by the way, do me, Dan. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> One or two. Give me two of them and spread it in the bottom. So we put No, I think in? you got enough dirt in the bottom, Jeff or Dan. What you what's you putting in there? That's my mycorrhiza two, slow you say? release. Two of them. Just kind of spread it. 
But you guys can see the root development down there. That's a lot of root. That's good. That's good. Did you spread your stuff in there? Yeah. Yeah, everything's in there. Good. Put it on. Oh, grass. you already spread the. Yep, it's in there. I wouldn't pay attention. No, he was busy, so I could take a picture. <laughs> now Dan put the grass in there. That's something I've never done before. But if I was a guessing man. That grass is going to add more nutrients because it's going to rot over a period of time. Which I have taken sod off the top of hose and then turned the sod upside down, put it down in the bottom of the hose, the same thing. It'll rot. I want this dirt just around the edges, not all of it. Now, when it comes to planting these right here, I try to be generous with this stuff for the lateral roots. The lateral roots will come across that and it'll help it to feed. <coughs> You didn't. Days in. I was a days in. That went up. Just a little bit more in there. How's that look? Go good? Yep. <coughs> Get her water in there, Kirkman. For anything. Yeah, water the plant, not damn. I my car ready to Now on this one right here, because of the branching out, they're touching the burlap a little bit, but the tree's getting ready to go dormant. By the time the tree comes out of dormancy, these burlaps will be off these trees. They're only here temporary until after the winter months. Here within probably another couple weeks the leaves will probably be falling off these they're already falling off the ones I got at the house but they're out in the open and not protected stick that there just right now and then I'll put a zip tie on there to hold it in place well this right here is a tension Mm. Oh, I see. Yeah. I knew I had you here for a reason, bro. <laughs> well, how long do you? How long does the wire? Hey, Jimmy, how long does the the, the metal itself? How long is that gonna stay on there? The little cage. Just until she's able to get this fenced off next year. Okay. If she's able to, we'll get it all fenced off. Mine is fenced off with a five foot fence and I don't have a problem with deer. Deer is a lazy animal. They can jump it, but a deer would rather take the easiest route versus obstacles. And that's the reason why a lot of people cut trees, make pinch points and stuff like to redirect deer in different oh, okay. directions. 
But I'd say a five to six foot fence is plenty big enough to protect these.